back in week four of the DFS NFL season. I'm Chris Durrell. I'm here for DailyFantasySportsRankings.com and RotorPros.com to bring you my daily fantasy cheat sheet that I provide every week, kind of give you an overview of how to use it for anyone that's new, as well as some of my top picks at each position. So without any further ado, let's jump in and get started. So the first tab you're going to see, um, actually before we even get into that, what you're going to want to do so that you can sort some of these columns in, in uh, individual player position tabs is you're going to want to create your own copy because it is going to be a view only when you first download your copy of it here. So you're going to want to go up to File, make a copy, name it whatever you'd like and click OK. It's going to open this one. This one I just called Chris's copy. Um, and then from there what you can do is you can sort. So I don't usually sort this first tab. We've already seen the Minnesota Rams game. Unfortunately as a Vikings fan that didn't go over so well. Um, so I'm going to hide that row. So these are just your player matchups every week. But what you're going to be able to do, um, I'll start with the salary trends for the week, is sort these columns. If you want to sort, right now it's sorted by week four salaries for each site, FanDuel and DraftKings. So most expensive down to least expensive. And then over here to the left is the one week trend. So what, we're, what I'm looking at there is the price from week three to week four. Um, eventually I'm going to get some average salaries and stuff in there as well. But if you wanted to see who is getting uh, the highest bump in salary this week. You go into this column B, data Z to A, which is highest to lowest. As you can see, Calvin Ridley went up 1,300. Tyler Boyd up 1,100. Wendell Small went up 1,000. Vice versa, you can go data A to Z, which would be lowest to highest, and you can see whose prices have dropped. Um, so we still got the Minnesota guys in there, but you can see like the Broncos defense, Robbie Anderson, uh, David Johnson's price continues to fall um, with the struggling Arizona offense. Um, we've got Tyrod Taylor, of course, he's not starting this week. And you got Dante Pettis. And then you can just kind of go through it that way. And you can do that for both DraftKings and FanDuel and see. Just kind of really helps you out in deciding, you know, where a player's value is versus last week. So you can get some struggling players who've seen their salary drop. Sometimes you have a player that did really good last week that his salary didn't move or maybe even drop. So you can grab some value that way. So that's one tab I like to look at. And then, of course, another one is uh, snap count percentage and player targets. So right now, when you go into that tab, what you're going to see is it's sorted by team. So we've got Arizona here. We've got week one, two, and three, the percent of snaps that they're out there for their team's offensive plays. You can also, uh, you know, you can go ahead and sort by, like, if you wanted to go average, you go sort highest to lowest there. And if you wanted to sort by position, then you'd go over to position and go either A to Z or Z to A. Um, which will take you quarterbacks first, which is the A to Z. But uh, what you really want to look at is the running back. So right here, as you can see, Ezekiel Elliott, Christian McCaffrey, James Conner, Todd Gurley, and Alvin Kamara are all out there over 80% of the time in their team's offensive plays. So that's kind of what you're looking at, especially in cash games when you're looking at your running backs. Is the running backs that are out there for the most offensive plays. And then I'm looking at running backs that get a lot of targets, and we'll get into that here shortly. So then with player targets, it's the same thing. As you come in here, it's going to be sorted by average targets per week. Um, so if you wanted to go ahead and look at it team by team, you just click in that column C, A to Z or Z to A, depending on which way you want to look at it. So then we've got Arizona. Um, so as you can see, like with Arizona, you can look at all their players here on their team that have got targets so far. Um, and we've got Larry Fitzgerald at the top. You get into a team like uh, Atlanta, Julio Jones at 11.3. Um, next one up is Mohamed Sanu at 5 and Calvin Ridley at 5 per game. So that's something you're going to want to look at uh, when breaking down your wide receivers or even by running backs. So again, I'm going to go up to the average. I'm going to sort highest to lowest. And then I'm going to get into position. So when you look at wide receivers, you can kind of check that out, see who's getting the most targets when you're looking at uh, targeting your wide receivers. And then uh, when I'm making my running back picks, like I said, what I'm looking at is targets. So... I'm just going to scroll down into the running back section. So we talked about Kamara and El or uh, Christian McCaffrey there sitting up there and their team's offensive snap count percentage is over 80%. They're also getting a lot of targets in the backfield as well. So that's something that we're going to be looking at close as well. So back to the matchup page. Um, it just kind of gives you the Vegas spread for the team. So Cincinnati is a plus 4.5, projected for 24 points, the over-under at 52.5. And then we've got uh, their passing offense versus the Atlanta Falcons passing defense. And then just the differential, so higher the number there, the better. And then same with rushing offense, uh, defensive rushing defense, and then the difference there. And then I've got fantasy points against the position. 
So this would be Atlanta's 29th against QBs, 19th against wide receivers, 11th versus tight ends, and 30th against running backs. So you can go through every team game by game and uh, kind of look at that. You want to look at teams with a lot of green. Like, for instance, scrolling down here, we look at uh, the Chargers versus San Francisco. Um, San Francisco has been, you know, outside the top 20 in fantasy points against quarterbacks wide receivers and tight ends a little bit better versus running backs but not a whole lot so that's kind of what we're targeting uh, you know especially when we're getting into stacks and stuff like that so we'll jump into some of my favorite picks here for the week um, start at the quarterback position looking at Drew Brees is my number one quarterback for cash games if you can afford him um, looks like a lot of values popping up so it's definitely viable to get him into your cash game lineups he's got an 80 percent completion percentage so far this year which is cr pretty crazy um, over a thousand passing yards so only three guys on this slate have that Ben Roethlisberger he's actually on Sunday Night Football so he's not going to be on the main slate and then we've got Ryan Fitzpatrick there as well so then looking at Drew Brees um, you know you've got your salary you've got your team projected points the spread you've got the passing offense versus the def defense's passing there and then we've got uh, the, the differential again and then uh, same as on the matchup page we've got the fantasy points against quarterback 2017 stats so I'm eventually going to be getting rid of that and putting just more 2018 stats in there different things that I feel are important for uh, quarterbacks we've got yards per attempt that's something I look at a little bit more when looking for upside Deshaun Watson I like for GPPs and uh, just for anyone else that's new green is going to be guys that I'm going to be targeting in all formats and then blue is going to be guys I'm looking at in just GPP so Deshaun Watson fits that Indianapolis has actually been a lot better than um, we anticipated going into the start of the season, um, but I do like Watson. He's had back-to-back 300-yard games, and he's got uh, Will Fuller and Deshaun. Deshaun Hopkins are two guys that I like uh, pairing him with this week. Matt Ryan's another another quarterback, so interesting um, for cash games. One, one way I like to go, that game's got the second highest total. Just going back to the matchup page here, looking at uh, Tampa Bay, sorry, Atlanta and Cincinnati. Second highest, or sorry, the highest over under in the main slate. So something I like to do for cash games, and I'm finding myself making lineups tonight. A lot of thing, a lot of times, I'm going with uh, my favorite lineups. Not so much Drew Brees, but I'm looking at Matt Ryan and Tevin Coleman. Um, Devont Devonta Freeman was ruled out this week again, so Tevin Coleman's going to be your lead back. They're home favorites, and you're pretty much covering all of Atlanta's scoring if you get Matt Ryan in there at quarterback and Coleman who's probably going to get the, you know, the majority of the rushes, 80% plus of the touch share this week. So I definitely like going that road for cash games. Eli Mann against New Orleans. Um, they've allowed the most passing yards overall. Um, most points allowed to opponent quarterbacks. So definitely looking at Eli Manning with uh, OBJ or Sterling Shepard, who I'm going to get into in a little bit. He has an amazing matchup this week. Manning has a 73% completion rating so far this year. I really like that. And uh, he's kind of getting these quarterbacks down here a little bit cheaper. Tannehill stands out to me as well in that New England game. Um, seven point dogs there. So he's going to have some opportunity to, to get his throws, you know, up in the 30, 35 attempt range. Um, like pairing him, especially with uh, Kenny Stills in GPPs. Um, he's the home run threat, going to get the touchdowns. And then I also like Danny Amendola going back into New England as well. Be talking about him here in a little bit as well. Um, he's going to be more of the cash game. He's really cheap, especially on FanDuel. Baker Mayfield uh, stands out. He's going to be starting this week for the Cleveland Browns after that uh, comeback win last week. He looked really good. He had a strong arm, uh, very accurate, worked really well with uh, Jarvis Landry. I believe he targeted him uh, nine times, completing, I think, seven for 91 yards, something like that. Um, he, so he was very good. He was going up against Oakland, who is one of the worst passing defenses in the league so far, giving up the 20th, uh, ranked 20th in points against uh, quarterbacks. And he's really cheap. He's going to be probably one of the highest owned quarterbacks when you start looking at GPP, breaking that down. And I like to use a site called Fanshare Sports, just kind of see tags and projected ownerships and stuff like that. He looks like he's going to be pretty popular this week at uh, his price tag. So one guy that I'm going to probably pivot to, um, he's gone up in dink and dunk offense so far this year, is Mitchell Trubisky. He does have uh, options to throw to. Uh, Trey Burton hasn't done much this week or so far this year, but he's got an amazing matchup. We'll talk about that when we get to the tight ends. 
Um, but Trubisky, I think, is a nice pivot off Mayfield at probably half the ownership, um, right around the same price range on both sites. And he's got Allen Robinson, Taylor Gabriel, Trey Burton for options there, uh, Jordan Howard in the in the run game, as well as uh, Tariq Cohen as a running back that he likes to throw to as well. So those are kind of the guys that I'm looking at uh, for quarterbacks. So now we'll jump into running backs. So loaded at the top, absolutely loaded on the main slate. You got Kamara, Gordon, Barkley, and Elliott. Uh, I honestly like them all. Um, Elliott definitely has the best matchup. They're only three-point favorites, but uh, Detroit has given up a ton of yards to running backs this season, a ton of points. Barkley gets a ton. Um, you know, he's getting the same carries as Elliott, as you can see here. They're 46-48. He's getting a ton more targets, so I definitely like uh, looking at Barkley from cash and uh, even pairing him with Eli and, say, OBJ or Eli and uh, Shepard in GPPs. Kamara, if you can afford him, definitely like going to him in some of my lines. His price is getting up there, but I mean, he's just just an elite option. He's not going to get a lot of rushes, as you can see, but uh, he's right up there in targets and receiving yards among everyone in the league, not just running back. So. And then uh, Melvin Gordon, the game script is just perfect for him. Ten and a half point favorites there. Um, San Francisco's really banged up, so I think LA is going to get out to a lead and going to be utilizing Gordon a lot, especially in the second half. Could see uh, him as one of the 20 carry backs here this week. And uh, for correlation, some of my correlation plays this week, I like Jordan Howard with the Bears defense. I think the Bears um, have a chance to get a ton of sacks. I think, they're, you know, it's, it may be a little bit lower scoring of a game, possibly, which seems weird because Tampa Bay's put up so many points. But they're facing probably one of the best defenses in the league here in Chicago this week, so the pass rush is going to be on. So I think you can get a lot of upside with the sacks, possibly turnovers there, um, especially if they get to Fitzpatrick early. Um, I think you might see some Jameis Winston in the second half there, and he might be a little bit rusty, so that could create some turnovers and even more sacks there as well. So definitely like that. Giovanni Bernard, he's going to be one of the highest owned running backs this week with Joe Mixon still out. Um, he catches the ball well, so Atlanta's the favorite, so he kind of covers both game scripts. Going to get some rushes early as well as probably going to get uh, five-plus targets this week if, if Atlanta takes a lead. Tevin Coleman, um, I talked about him in my DFSR pivot plays this week. I also talked about him as a value play over on Rotopros. Um, I like him. He's taken over the lead role because Devonta Freeman's out. Talked about that uh, in the quarterback section there. I think he's going to get uh, in somewhere in that range of 15 carries this week. He doesn't get a lot of targets, um, but the game script's right. I think Atlanta at home is going to kind of not maybe roll over Cincinnati, but I think they're going to take the lead and then he could get some extra carries come the second half. Carlos Hyde in that Cleveland game I like, and then uh, something that stands out to me this week a lot is the New England and Miami matchup. New England's a pretty big favorite, seven-point favorite, uh, almost 28 points projected. So I like James White uh, a little bit, but uh, the, the one that I'm really going to this week with Burkhead being placed on IR is Sony Michel. He, he's seen his uh, touch share go up every single, or every single week. He's only played two weeks. He was... He wasn't there for week one, so definitely looking at him. Um, they drafted him in the first round, so you, you don't see a Bill Belichick team go ahead and draft a running back in the first round and then not try and get him involved. So I think uh, if he does have a good game this week, we're going to see his price kind of up in that Carlos Hyde, James White kind of range in the mid-five, mid-6K on FanDuel. So I think this is the week to get on him before that price goes up if he has a good game, and I think he's going to get the goal line carries. So the upside is definitely there for Michelle this week, especially at 4,500 on DraftKings. So going over to wide receiver, um, top cash game guy is Michael Thomas. He's just an incredible, he's got 38 of 40 balls for 95% catch rate so far. This he's just been unbelievable. He can run every route. He's a deep threat, um, you know, third down guy. He's pretty much getting targeted all the time, averaging 132 yards per game right now. So pretty incredible for him. Um, nice matchup. Pretty pretty good matchup uh, against the Giants. The Giants have allowed the seventh least amount of fantasy points to wide receivers, but a lot of that comes with some of the matchups they have had. Talked about Beckham, um, pairing him with Eli, but he also gets a lot of targets, so I would consider him in cash games as well. Comes a bit cheaper, but I'd rather pay up for Thomas in that spot. Allen, we got to find a little bit more about his injury. Um, I'll be checking into that. We're doing a live show again tomorrow morning uh, over on Roto Pros. Um, Josh and I will be going over just some morning thoughts as we get uh, 
you know some some inactives start coming in weather that sort of thing so be sure to join us for that Jarvis Landry uh, definitely like him for cash games at quite a big discount if you can't pay up for Thomas and you want to go with Landry if you're paying up for running backs definitely like him Oakland uh, ranks 31st when looking at uh, you know opponents defensive rank and that's kind of like a mix of um, like a DVOA yards per game that sort of stuff so Going down uh, a little bit further, uh, Golden Tate, he's an injury we're going to have to look into, but if he is out, I'm all over Kenny Galladay. Um, he's kind of been the breakout guy this year. His price is starting to go up. He is under six grand still on FanDuel, so I like him there a little bit more this week, but I am considering him definitely on both sides against Dallas. It's a little bit lower pace game. Dallas has been pretty good against the wide receiver, but uh, if Tate's out, he's yeah, I mean, Galladay's probably going to get 10-plus targets this week, him and Marvin Jones. Allen Robinson, um, I've got him labeled as all formats. I'm probably going to end up switching that up to GPP. He does get a lot of targets, um, but I feel this is like a Trey Burton week against Tampa Bay. I'll talk about him a little bit when I get into the next one, so probably going to be switching him over to GPP. Kenny Stills with Ryan Tannehill, I talked about that. Um, Amari Cooper, he just he's always low-owned. Um, just because he can have a 100-yard game and two-touchdown week and then go and give you like a, a five-catch for 52 and zero touchdowns and totally blow it up. So he's kind of coming off one of those bad weeks, so I think he's uh, definitely a target in GPPs for me this week as well. I'm looking at some cheaper guys, uh, if Randall Cobb is healthy and in there, I'm definitely looking at him. If not, one guy I'm going to be going to in a lot of my lineups on both sites is Geronimo, Geronimo Allison. He's got a 72% catch rate this year. Uh, Rodgers has shown, you know, to like him quite a bit, uh, targeting him. So I'll definitely be looking at him. If Cobb is out, if Cobb is in, you know, i probably split the exposure between the two in that Green Bay-Buffalo game. Tyler Boyd for Cincinnati. I've uh, been talking about him a lot. I'm surprised his price isn't starting to go up. He's kind of sharing the targets with uh, A.J. Green, um, which is nice to see. And uh, he may not be getting all the touchdowns. But uh, that, that Bengals offense is definitely looking good this year. Mike Williams is becoming a nice uh, end zone threat, so he's got some touchdown upside. Um, not getting a ton of targets with Keenan Allen, of course, and Melvin Gordon catching the ball more this year. So he's not really a guy I'm looking at in cash. Quincy and Noon was an interesting one. Um, going up against a tough Jacksonville defense, but their two top corners, uh, Boye and Ramsey, are on the outside. So he's going to get the best matchup of those wide receivers out of the slot. So, um, and at his price, especially on DraftKings, maybe not so much, more of a GPP on FanDuel, but uh, he's one that I'll be looking at in cash um, if I need to go down that far. And then I mentioned Taylor Gabriel in the Chicago stack there as well. So moving over to tight end, I'm just going to jump right to my top guy. I mentioned him a couple times here is Trey Burton. Um, he His price is still low because he's kind of underwhelmed so far this season, but he's got an amazing matchup against the Bucks, they've allowed the most fantasy points when it, in terms of uh, tight ends so far this season, so I'm definitely looking at that. His catch rate's a little low, but I can see that uh, evening out more around that 75 to 80% range, so uh, definitely looking at him. Jared Cook makes a lot of sense as well. He's been just getting a ton of targets in that Oakland offense so far this year. Cleveland has been tough against uh, tight ends, but just, I mean, you, when you can get a tight end, which is a very volatile, if you're not paying up for, like, Gronk and Ertz, it's pretty bare um, week to week. Like George Kittle was good, but he's lost his quarterback now. So, um, I mean, if you can get a guy that's going to be getting, you know, seven, eight targets per game with the tight end position in that four, 5K range, um, it's definitely cash viable for sure. Tyler Eifert's one I'm looking at in GPP. Um, I like Andy Dalton. Um, he's got a great matchup against Atlanta. It's kind of a banged up defense. I mean, the corners have been better. Um, but he's going to see safeties, which, I mean, their safety's out, their linebacker's out, so I definitely like Tyler Eifert. He had a pretty good week last week, so he's coming off that. Um, so definitely looking at him more for GPP until we, you know, see a couple weeks um, back-to-back where he's going to be getting those targets because there is Tyler Boyd. Um, you've got Bernard who's going to get targets, and, of course, you've got A.J. Green. So he's kind of like third or fourth in that pecking order. So that's kind of why I'm looking at him in more to GPPs. Going cheap, I like uh, Austin Hooper. He's got touchdown upside. Matt Ryan seems to like to uh, target him when they get inside the 20 and inside the 10-yard line. And then with Evan Ingram out this week, Rhett Ellison's probably going to be your top guy when it comes to Chicago. If you want to punt the position, he's only 2700 
on DraftKings, 4,100 on FanDuel. He's got a pretty good matchup against New Orleans, who gives up a ton of points. They have been good against the tight end, but they haven't uh, faced a whole lot of you know tight ends so far. So I just, it's it's a real punt position. I mean, if you can get crap six to eight DK points out of him um, or Fanduel points, I think that's enough. You know, because you're going to be able to go ahead and get some elite players in the wide receiver running back range. And of course, if you're going to pay up, I mentioned it. Uh, you got Zach Ertz and you got Rob Gronkowski. Both get a lot of targets. Both get touchdown upside. Ertz is more definitely GPP, not just because of his price, because he's got a tough matchup. Tennessee has been really good against the tight end so far this year, so he's definitely going to be GPP. But he is leading all tight ends and targets so far this year. So, um, I mean, if you do have that extra salary range and you do want to pay up at the tight end, he is. You could consider him in cash just because he's an elite tight end, and uh, he's gonna, he's getting 10 plus targets per game right now. But with Elshon Jeffrey coming back, um, he's gonna take some targets away there as well. So you're gonna want to pay attention to that. Myself for cash, like I said, I'm gonna be going Cook and Burton, and then GPP. My favorite one is Eifert, and then punting at Ellison, and then I'm depending on how many lineups I'm gonna do, I'm probably gonna be mixing in some Hooper and Ertz as well in GPP. And then even up to some Gronk as well at the most expensive. Just because a lot of people, sometimes he's going to be low-owned. Um, the, the New England offense hasn't been terrific lately. And that may keep their ownership down with some other smash spots this week. So definitely looking at him and GPP a little bit lower ownership. Defenses, uh, the main ones for cash. If you're paying up, I like Jacksonville versus the Jets. Going up against a rookie quarterback. And then I like the Bears, of course. I talked about them. They get a ton of sacks. They lead the league with 14 sacks. Third in takeaways with eight. And then you got Tampa Bay, who is giving up. Uh, as you can see here, there's only four other teams that have uh, given the ball away um, as much as them. So definitely looking that way. GPP, I like the Seahawks versus Arizona starting a rookie quarterback. I like Cleveland. Um, most Yeah, on both sites. Mostly on FanDuel, though. They're really low priced, so I don't mind going Cleveland as a punt when it comes to defenses to help load up. And then the Cowboys, again, they let everyone down last week, including myself. I like pairing them, the Cowboys defense, with Ezekiel Elliott um, there as well. So it's kind of where I'm looking at there. Top GPP stacks tab, um, I change it up a little this week. So I'm listing the different combinations. Like so you can see for the Bengals, I've got four different combinations I'm looking at. you got the team total on both sites, and then you got the percentage of the cap, just to kind of give you an idea of which, you know, if you're comparing the Bengals to the Falcons or the Dolphins or the Lions or whatever team you're looking at, um, deciding how much cap that's going to cost you on each site just to when you're into your lineup construction. So that pretty much goes over the sheet. Um, this week, some of my top plays. Again, I'm going to go over some of these some of these plays with Josh on the Roto Pros live show tomorrow morning, a little bit more in detail. We're going to go position by position as well, and just kind of look at uh, discuss some of our plays and uh, go back and forth there. If you have any questions, um, definitely head over to. We'll start with DFSR.com. If you click on the NFL tab, uh, if you're a member, we've got a lot of premium content this year. We've added a ton of it. Um, like my, I've got a GPP ownership pivot plays that goes up every week. Doug's looking at some betting spotlights. Um, and then we've got uh, the year of the 10 target wide receiver. So we've got data on that. James put that one out earlier in the week. We've got free podcasts. We've got the mega podcast. We've got the cash game podcast. And then the week three review and the week four preview podcast. So there's three podcasts every week. And then we've got the free uh, cash game article there as well. Doug puts out early in the week. That's my stacks, or I do a stacks article, and then Doug's, yeah, here we are, the cash article down here. So if you have questions and you're a DFSR member, just head into the member chat room. I'm in there pretty much all morning, um, pretty much all night as well, answering questions, so hit me up there. Over on Rotopros, um, you can see all the content we got there by going up to member content and clicking articles. Wait for that to load. If you're not a member, make sure to hit that sign up tab in the top right. Get a two week free trial check out everything we do. The articles are all free, but uh, sign up there. What you can do is you can jump into the, this is our Roto Pros Slack chat. Um, so I'm pretty much in there all the time too. I cover that as well. These are our articles. So every week for NFL, we've got an NFL GPP and deep field stacks that Rob comes out with. We've got the Saturday morning, if this, then that, that Josh puts out. And then I do a value plays, top value plays at each position. And then I've got a cash article on here as well. And then, of course, we cover a bunch of other sports as well if you want to check that out. 
And last but not least, you can hit me up on Twitter. And my handle on Twitter is at Jaeger underscore bombs nine. Um, hit me up on there if you've got any questions. Um, I share all of my content on there, so definitely uh, go check out my timeline. I'll jump over there right now. Um, we've got NASCAR, PGA, NHL, NFL, MLB. I pretty much cover it all. I um, like to find a lot of information and share it, so definitely check that out. And that pretty much covers everything this week. If you can, make sure to go like that video. Subscribe to both channels, both uh, my Chris Durrell Jaeger Bombs channel as well as the Rotor Pros channel. You're going to get uh, sign up for the notifications on the on the page that you see below, and uh, you'll, it'll let you know when we come out with new videos. We you know we cover all sports, so we got videos coming out all the time, looking at uh, different stuff, um, you know, top picks, strategies, that sort of thing. So definitely do that, and uh, let's see some green screens this week, everyone. Good luck. <laughs>